This video is designed to show a user how to integrate their API Fortress output with QTest uh, using Jenkins to produce the data for QTest. So right now we're looking at our portfolio, or, uh, our test, or our collection of tests rather, and what we want to do is we want to get this data into Jenkins and then allow it to pass through into QTest. So that's going to take a few steps and we're going to go through them one by one. The first thing we're going to have to do is uh, generate a webhook for our project. And this is done uh, from any view in API Fortress by clicking on this gear icon here. And once the page loads, we're going to click on API hooks, and we're going to add an API hook. I'm going to click, and it's a demo API project. We're going to click the check mark, and I'm going to select myself as a user, and hit the check mark again. So now we have this API hook. Um, and the API hook is actually, in and of itself, a very versatile tool. So if we throw that in there we can see the basic project details uh, of this API hook. And then if I go to tests, run all, I can actually run all six tests in the project. And if I take that a step further, I can type as a query parameter, sync equals true. And that'll show us more verbose results for the actual API tests themselves. And this will take an, an extra couple seconds to process. And there we go. So now we're looking at a JSON response body of all of the tests in the project that just ran together. Now I need to take this one more step um, in order to get Jenkins to pass it to QTest. So we're going to add another parameter to the query parameters. We're going to go end format equals JUnit because QTest likes JUnit input. So we're going to have to output in JUnit. So I'm going to hit enter again just to verify that this response body is formatted correctly. And in a moment this, there we go. So now we're looking at uh, an XML output in JUnit of our test results. Perfect. So we're actually just gonna, we're gonna copy this guy right here. And I already took the liberty of opening up Jenkins. I'm gonna create a new item. I'm gonna call it, you know, uh, let's call it QTest test. It's a good name, freestyle project. And we're gonna hit okay. And that'll create our job for us. So this is going to take a few steps, and again, we're going to go through them one by one. We're going to scroll down and add a build step, and the first step we're going to add is making an HTTP request. And if you've been following along, you can probably assume we're going to make that request to the API hook that we just created, again, with tests run all uh, appended, and then the query parameter sync equals true and format equals JUnit. Now we're not quite done with this component yet, we have to hit advanced, scroll all the way to the bottom, and we are going to output the response to a file. And just for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to call it apif.xml. Great. So now what we're doing here is we're making a call to our API hook. We're running all the tests in our port in our project, and we are outputting the results as XML. And then we're saving that XML as apif.xml. Now we need to add a post build action, and that post build action will be publish JUnit test result report. And all we're going to do here is put in the name of the file. So again, apif.xml. So this is going to allow Jenkins to utilize that XML file in further post-build actions. Finally, we're going to submit the JUnit test results to QTest. Now, there's a lot of red text here. Don't let it alarm you. Um, API Fortress. Oh, actually, let's do this the right way. HTTP colon slash slash API Fortress .qtestnet.com. Great. And we're going to use so this API key is actually available uh, in uh, QTest. Uh, if you take a look at their documentation, it'll show you how to access it. But it is important that you have that handy. So once we have our URL and our API key in, we can hit retrieve data, and that'll populate our projects and releases on the QTest side of things. And if this populates, you know you're doing it right. Um, and we're gonna yeah, we'll just use Jenkins to unit export testing and. Uh, release one. You don't have to select environment, but just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to select production. And we're actually at this point done. So what we've done here is again, we've made a call to the webhook. We have saved the XML. We have published the XML. And now we're submitting that XML to QTest. So I'm going to hit save. And that's actually the entirety of the procedure. And in a moment, once it finishes saving, we are going to build now. And this sometimes takes, you know, more than a minute. But let's just see how our Jenkins build does. It should pass. 
or rather it, it should mostly pass. In this case, actually, that, that project has one test specifically set up to fail. And there we go. So the, uh, the build is done. And if we click into this, we see test result one failure. You can click through to here and see the actual failure itself. But more pertinent to this demonstration, we can click on QTest plugin and we can actually go directly to the QTest test suite that this data output it to. And we should see, yep, there we go. We had six executed tests, which is normal for this project. Uh, we had one failure, which is the expected result. And um, yeah, so that is how you pass data from API Fortress to QTest.